This is Joseph. I'm at 8, 2014, on behalf of Becky Holburn's Art Process Blog. Keep on trucking Nata Soup. If you could introduce yourself, please. My name is Eddie Wright. I'm the writer of Tyranny of the Muse and the upcoming horror series Christmas. Okay, and what brings you to Ape this year? Is uh, Chrysalis being debuted at the convention? Uh, it's not being debuted yet. We have this preview zine of uh, some of the art that, or the, some of what's to come in the comic series once we finish it. Yeah. Um, Jamaica Dyer is the artist on the series. She co-created, well, she actually created the, the concept of the series, brought me the idea. We worked out the story together, and then I kind of just went away and wrote the script. Um, was that a, more of a collaborative process, or she just kind of had the, the general story idea, conveyed it to you, and uh, you you turned it into a, a comic form? It was, um, it was very collaborative, but I went away and did the writing. Yeah. So it was really, we, had, we talked a lot. She broke down a bunch of pages, yes. thumbnails, and sort of gave it to me, and then I was able to flesh out the characters in a way that I thought would work, and brought it back to her, and she kind of signed off on it. So it was very collaborative, but I also was able to put a lot of my own stuff into it. Yeah. Um, but I am debuting Tyranny of the Muse 2, which this is the first time that's available. Awesome. Um, it's, it's been available digitally for a little bit, but this is the first time we have it in print. And you're the writer on this series as well. I'm the writer. Who is the artist? The artist is a guy named Jesse Palmer, who did the, he's done the first two issues of the series. Okay. Um, this is, Tyranny of the Muses, and it began as an adaptation of a novella that I wrote a few years ago called Broken Bolts. I thought it would work really well as a comic book. And um, so I kind of put out on Twitter, I'm looking for an artist to help me adapt this book into a comic book series. A fan of the book, uh, an artist named Jerry Montano, yep. he reached out to me, said I think I, can, I think I know someone, and introduced me to Jesse, and we worked together on this. And so we've done the two issues so far, and the series is going to continue on from there. That sounds great. Uh, you guys are self-publishing it uh, at the time? We are, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, are you are you currently pitching it to editors, or do you think it's going to be something you continue to self-publish? Uh, I'm not actively pitching it, but I'm not closed off. Yeah, from of that. course. Like, I, I, if, if somebody wants to foot the bill, that's cool. <laughs> um, but I'm not. I'm not going out of my way to pitch it. I, it. Right now, it's working the way it's working. Yeah, I understand. So, are you getting a lot of um, uh, of your fans from uh, promoting it online or attending conventions? You mentioned this is your first time at eight. Yeah. Um, Mostly promoting it online, we serialize the comic uh, through Study Group Comics, which is a um, sort of like a web comic publisher uh, run by a guy named Zach Soto, okay. who's uh, from Portland, and he uh, there's it's he runs this site that is just a it's uh, just a ton of amazing, awesome comic creators, and so we serialize on there, and we've gotten a lot of fans through that. So a lot of people have actually come to the table today, recognizing. Saw it on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, that's great. Um, and also, uh, uh, from writing a book and publishing a book a few years ago, there's a, there's a nice pool of people who actually really read your work. It. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so uh, the convention is actually pretty new to me. What, what got you into writing comics? You just had a story that you mentioned, uh, Tyranny of the Muse, and you just thought it would work well as a comic, or you know you know comic artists uh, that just live in the area? Um, I always loved comics. I was, you know, like I grew up reading superhero comics like everybody else. Yeah. Then I got into alternative comics when I, you know, was in my late teens, got into Daniel Klaus and Charles Burns and all those guys. Yeah. And um, when I realized I could start writing and maybe actually try to turn it into a career. I wrote a book, and then I realized writing books is like comics that actually is more conducive to the kind of writing that I do. My writing is very dialogue heavy. Yeah. Um, I'm not like a like a, a literary writer, so I just realized, and, 
actually, one of the things that inspired me to consider comics was Jamaica, who is now I'm collaborating with. I read her book, Weird Fishes, and it was everything that I like and everything that I think is awesome. Yeah. And so I, it made me realize that I could turn my book into a comic pretty easily because I saw what she could do in a comic. Right. And so um, I just realized that that's what, that's what I should probably be doing. Okay. So how did you go about forming the connections with, with artists? Uh, I know it's a little bit harder for a writer to find an artist as yeah. opposed to the other way around. Uh, you mentioned that you put out feelers on Twitter, but did you do anything else um, to kind of try to draw attention, or you had enough, you built enough prestige as a writer that yeah. you could uh, draw artists' attention without having to try to dive into the scene itself necessarily? Yeah, well, for the, the for Tyranny of the Muse, because I was adapting a book that already had a following, yep. it was a little bit easier because I was able to just say, hey, I'm looking for this, and then it, it actually kind of just worked out. Since, it's actually been a lot harder. Um, so doing things like coming to conventions and meeting people, um, just looking at Tumblr and trying to, and just seeing like, I really like this work, it would work well with what I do, and then emailing the artist and just asking if they want to collaborate. Really, the only thing I've been able to do. Yeah, Jamaica has worked out because she, she it actually was through my book. She came to a reading that I did. We became friends. But it's been years since we started talking until we're able to collaborate on something. Okay. It's hard to find. Them. So it's just you're trying to cherry pick people that you think would work well with you, and then contact everybody individually. Yeah. And people that are available. And yeah. That want to work on something that they didn't create themselves. Right. That can be difficult. That's that's always hard because a lot of people, especially the kind of artists that I'm drawn to, are cartoonists, not so much artists who draw superhero comics or that are comfortable just drawing scripts. Yeah. A lot of them are people who have their own ideas and want to make their own stories. So why would they waste their time with my dumb stories? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's really cool when people actually are get excited about get your work. They want to yeah. They want to work with it because it does become a more collaborative process once we start working together. It's not so much, you know, they're just doing whatever I say. Yeah. It's, they bring themselves to it. Right. Well, I imagine you can't express everything that you're wanting precisely in words, so there has to be some artistic input. Yeah, and, and because I'm not a visual artist. Or visual artistic input, yeah, I, I should say. Like, I, I really want them to do what they feel yeah. right. And especially with a book like Tyranny of the Muse, like, I'm the writer, it's very, it, it's free to get very experimental. So, Jesse, especially with the first issue, so far, so good. was, I gave him very, like, the script was pretty sparse as far as descriptions go. It was, it was just like, you know, Frank does this, Bonnie does this, and I let Jesse do what he needed to do, and he did, he did it. He, he did something that I wasn't expecting, and that was perfect. So, you mentioned uh, Chrysalis is going to be more of a, a horror story. Yeah. Uh, are you writing a lot of visual horror into it, or is it more just building an atmosphere that you're trying to um, carefully collect through, uh, like, a sound narrative? Um, it's both. There's, it starts out with an atmosphere, but it, it gets to a place where there is... I'm writing visual horror, but it's, again, it's, it's something that... Like, my descriptions are not what I think should necessarily be happening. My descriptions are something that should inspire the art. So okay. Jamaica will take it and make it into what she needs to make it into. Yeah. Like, it's sort of, it's just sort of like, it's simple what I say should happen, what I think should happen, and then she'll make it really awesome. <laughs> That's really how it works. Okay, and um, do you have any thoughts about uh, Ape? You said this is your first time here. Would you have any recommendations for someone who's considering tabling for the first time? Um, it's pretty cool. I don't, I don't have any recommendations. <laughs> I can't decide whether I'm supposed to sit or stand this time. Okay. I think it's a preference thing, mostly. I would say bring water. Yeah, and, uh, that could help. And just be nice to people and don't be afraid to pitch your idea to them. Yeah. Some people, they'll stand four feet away from your table and stare at it until you talk to them. And then they'll come over and they'll probably, they might buy something from you. And you might have a fan. So 
actually engaging engaging people is, is like 95 percent of what works. Okay, and where could we find your work online? Uh, you can go to eddie-wright.com, E-D-D-I-E dash W-R-I-G-H-T.com or tyrannyofthemuse.com, uh, which uh, will redirect to that site. Okay. Yeah, it redirects to the Tyranny of the Muse section of that site. And when is Chrysalis going to be available? Uh, the full? A uh, couple of months. Okay. That's all I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's working diligently on it. Yeah. I'm hoping to find a publisher actually for that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I hope you have a good day. Thank you. I hope you do too.